Today we are starting a very big project, which is painting the interior of our RV. We are remodeling our Class C home, and one of the biggest things that we're doing is giving the inside a facelift. And paint will help so much lighten up the space and kind of make it our own. But we've heard from everyone that's painted that it is a total pain in the butt, and it's one of the worst projects during an RV renovation. We're not quite sure how terrible it will be. Hopefully we'll shine some insight on that on this video. But we're also gonna be showing you the various steps that it takes to actually paint the RV interior and have your paint last. So we're only going to be painting the bottom kitchen cabinets and the walls. So our first project for today is going to be taking this door off as well as the return for the furnace. And we're also gonna be removing all of the hardware because we need to sand these down uh, so that we can get them ready for the first coat of primer and gripper. So I will be helping Liz a little later, but I'm just basically here right now to work the drill. <laughs> I'm gonna remove everything it's pretty straightforward. Um, just two screws and the door will fall off. Two screws and the handle will fall off. There you have it. Any renovation that you're doing, make sure you have a couple of these. These are cheap. They're magnetic little plates for any kind of screws. That way you don't lose them. Big help. Really big help. All right, anytime you're pulling any of the um, vents for the furnace off, you're gonna have ducting like this behind it. I'm just gonna peel this back. So there's duct tape and a screw. All right. Well, that's nice to know. So I guess you just put the duct tape around to keep it from leaking. Ow, we can get this out of here. So there's that. We're going to be using a dual action electric sander. And if you're brand new to sanding or painting or ever having to use one of these, you can use a hand sandpaper. It just would take a really long time. Luckily, this tool will cut down the amount of time that we have to sand the walls and the cabinets by a lot. And there are different numbers of grit sandpaper. So the lower the number, the more aggressive the grit of the sandpaper is, which means it's going to actually um, get rid of the surface or get cut into the surface at a lot faster of a rate. Um, so we're going to be using a low grit number. We're actually going to be using 150. You may want to use 100 sandpaper on the cabinets. And the higher the grit number, it means the less aggressive it's going to be. So it kind of gives it a smooth finish. So we're going to be finishing off the cabinets with 220 grit sandpaper. We're probably going to be using around 220 on the walls as well. Um, so the cabinets are going to need a more aggressive grit because especially if there's a stain, you want to remove that fully. And the walls don't need as much because while you're not getting rid of the wallpaper, what you're trying to do is just give it texture so the paint has something to grip onto. As I mentioned before, if you don't do these things, it can cause problems where your paint will peel eventually. So make sure you do the proper sanding. There is a paint out there called Beyond Paint where you don't have to sand any of the cabinets or any of the walls. We did not choose to use it this time because we saw really mixed reviews. Some people said it worked perfectly, especially on their RV. And then other people said it did not work as it, it was said it would. So we didn't want to go through the effort of doing it to potentially not have it work. Beyond Paint, you can order off Amazon. You can find it at Home Depot. It's, it's really not that hard to find. It is a little bit more expensive than normal paint. I just didn't want to go through the hassle of painting this RV, getting it how we wanted, and then having lots of scratch marks or peeling paint. This way is almost guaranteed to work if you do the proper prep work your paint should stay and you are in a small space right now there's no AC I probably have a sweat dripping off my face if you can open windows open doors whatever you can to get the sand or the grit that's going to be coming off of the cabinets or the walls out um, but I am going to be using a mask so I'm not breathing this in and I'm going to have eye protection so that the grit is not getting into my eyes make sure you have these And the reason it's important to line up the holes on this particular sander is because it has this dust, dust cup. And if you don't have the holes lined up uh, for, the, for the sanding pad, then the dust cup won't work. For some reason, 
reason, our audio was completely lost in this clip, but we did sand everything down. We got all of the stain off of the cabinets, and uh, the particle board kind of looks a little blotchy, but it is sanded down well. The next thing we have to do is prep the walls. So we're going to be removing um, all of the actual face plates off of any light switches. We're going to be sanding down any of the holes and prepping the walls so that we can spackle and then sand. From my research that I did online, everyone suggested Bondo, which is actually like an automobile putty that they can use on cars. Um, this was the smallest can we could find. We're going to use like this much of it, but hey, we did find it at Home Depot. You can also get it on Amazon, which we'll have a link down below. Um, so pretty much we've smoothed out all of the things on the wall. If there was any holes, we've made sure if there's any like um, pulling of the old wallpaper, we've made sure to smooth that out. I filled all of the holes with uh, this Bondo and then I re-smoothed it with the sandpaper so it's a nice finish and it's all even on the walls, but you will need this if you have holes. So we got all of the sanding done and now we are working on the next step of prepping the walls. It sounds like a lot of prep, I know. You have to sand, you have to spackle, but once you get all that done, the last prepping stage is going to be spraying it with like a degreaser. So there are a few options of like chemical degreasers that you can just spray and wipe on the walls, as well as any cabinets you're gonna be painting. We chose to do a more natural route, which is just gonna be vinegar and water. I'm not quite sure what that does chemically, but from what I've read, it helps pull anything, any grease or any elements that might be in the wall that would potentially cause oil underneath the paint and cause it to bubble, peel, come off. So we're going to be spraying all of the walls, all of the cabinets with this uh, vinegar water mixture. And we had so much sand from actually sanding things, so much dust in the air from yesterday. I probably vacuumed with our shop vac for at least an hour and I'm sure there's still so much dust. So make sure when you are sanding or prepping yourself that you clean up thoroughly. I actually took the shop vac and dusted or vacuumed off all of the walls and the cabinets just because there was so much dust left behind. You don't want that to get into your paint. <sighs> so I taped everything off. It was a lot of work to tape. I kind of forgot how annoying taping is. And there's so many nooks and crannies in an RV. There's so many weird little spots that I'm not even really sure how we're gonna quite get the paintbrush back there, but I think I've taped everything off, so now I'm going to prime. So let's talk about the primer that I'm using. So we are going to be using a primer that is a gripper and a sealer. So that means it can be used on the interior or exterior. We chose like an all natural white, um, but you wanna make sure it has the gripper in the primer so it's not just a primer for normal walls because you need it to actually adhere better to the uh, wallpaper that's inside of most RVs since there is no texture like a room in your home might have had. We have heard that the walls of the RV can kind of suck the primer or the gripper up so we've heard that you have to do several coats uh, with possibly two or three. We're not quite sure how many we'll have to do hopefully just two and then we can do the paint. Let's get working on the primer. Painting is hard. <laughs> not, not hard, but tiring. And I forgot how tiring it is. It's also very good to have two size rollers. I've been using the small one actually probably more than the big one, at least in the bathroom. Um, but this has come in very handy. yesterday and I'm not gonna lie it looks great it already is such a crisp beautiful white I'm not sure why others said they had such a hard time with primer we did two full coats and it really honestly looks great Dennis doesn't even know why we're gonna paint white over it but we're still doing it so today I'm gonna be painting the base of the kitchen cabinets a very 
special color. We'll be revealing that soon, as well as finishing off white. But I'm hoping maybe just one coat since the primer did such a good job sticking. We actually only used half a gallon of the gripper and primer for two coats throughout the coach. Now, if we were painting every single cabinet, I'm sure we probably would have used around a gallon, um, but we purchased two initially thinking we would need that and we really didn't. So uh, we just bought a quart of our normal paint for the white walls. I want to show you guys what color we chose for the bottom base coat of the cabinets. We are excited about it. Um, we decided to do a really fun, vibrant, unique, kind of quirky interior for the RV. We, we like bright colors. We like really fun patterns. Um, and so this color will definitely tie into our ultimate theme, but no judgment on the color. Yeah, baby. It's gonna go really, really well with the overall theme. So excited. Dennis actually picked this color. If a lot of you guys are thinking, pink, what? She must have picked this. No, Dennis did. It's because he has a good eye for design. I can't wait to see it on the cabinets. We did do a test color to make sure we liked it and the lighting and everything, and I think it's gonna turn out great. It's gonna look great! I'm sorry for all my profuse sweating, but it's really hot in the RV. It did start raining, but I wanted to finish painting, so I'm just working in Florida heat with just two windows open. So, the paint went really well. We did about three coats, and it looks really nice. We ended up going with a satin paint for everything. Um, we're hoping it's gonna hold up fine. Normally the more shine or sheen that there is, the more durable it is. This is kind of like the middle of the road. Um, but one thing that the, I read on all the vlogs, it said one of the biggest mistakes people make when they paint is they don't take the tape off right away. So it's been about 15 minutes since my last coat and I'm going around all of the cabinets and taking off the tape so if not, you actually have to use a knife and cut it off. But when I do it this way, it pretty much comes off really easy and um, it doesn't peel any of the paint off with it. And if you wait too long, it'll take the paint off of your beautiful cabinets and you don't want that or your walls. So make sure to take the tape off quickly. Painting's complete. I cannot believe we got the job done. It was definitely a huge task and undertaking, but it wasn't as terrible as I was expecting. I think a large part of success or annoyance in painting your RV is going to be how much you're painting, right? We're only 25 foot class C. We're not painting every single cabinet. Additionally, our cabinets are nice and smooth. They don't have uh, those bevels or details that would have made it really annoying to sand and paint. So we kind of took the easy route here, but I'm so pleased with how it turned out. A few tips I would give you guys if you're going to be painting your RV is choose a really quality gr uh, gripper and primer. We did two full coats of that. And when we did the white on on top we only had to do one coat and it turned out beautiful nice and crisp and white and everything is nice and even you can't see a lot of different marks from the brush strokes versus the roller it just turned out really really nice another thing is do not leave the tape on for very long we waited about 15 to 20 minutes after we had painted our coat of white or pink on our base cabinets and we removed the tape and that helped keep um, from pulling there are a few spots where we either forgot the tape or we waited too long and it did actually pull off some of the paint from the wall so we've had to go back and touch that up um, so make sure to set it, let it dry. When they say let paint set, it typically means that you just pretty much leave it in hopefully a cool uh, moisture free area without use of the cabinets or touching things on the wall, hanging things, just kind of leaving it to be and letting it really, really, really dry for at least a week, but two weeks is suggested. We've heard helps um, just kind of keep your paint in the best condition possible over a long period of time. It's definitely worth it. It feels so much airier and brighter in here. It adds a lot of fun element. And when you kind of walk into the RV, you just see the pink kitchen cabinets at first or the coral kitchen cabinets. And you think, wow, that's a, that's pretty bright. But uh, with the overall theme, I really think once we get our couch in here and the fabric that we're using on the couch, it'll really tie everything together. So we're super pumped about this. We can't wait to show you more. Make sure if you've not subscribed to our channel that you please click the button below and ring the bell next to it. 
we put out a new video out every single Monday. Right now we're focused on RV renovation as we get our Class C ready to hit the road, but we also have fun travel videos showing you where we RV and explore as we eat and see throughout the country. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you next Monday. So there's that. You got there on top of your head. <laughs> I knew that. Okay. Give us a wave.